What's in your garage? Well, let me show you what's in mine. Now, if you guys have been following us, you know that I have pretty much an unlimited selection of motorcycles I could ride from our inventory that's for sale or bikes that are in the museum. But there's a select few that I call my own. There's probably a dozen bikes. And I keep three of these at my house here. Uh, I guess I'll start with the, the simplest and smallest of them. This is a Honda XR250. Uh, this is something that I bought with a bent valve on it for a very low entry fee. This is a 2003 model. They've been the same for many moons, but this one here is, uh, it's got the long travel suspension on it. It's a four stroke. It had a bent valve because something, Wizard said something happened with the decompression lever. So while we had it apart, Jimmy Laurinaitis and Wizard were like, hey, let's let's build the motor a little bit. So I put a high compression piston in it and a uh, twin air filter. And we put a, a, a builder, uh, I forget the cam we put in it, but we put a special cam in it. Total parts cost might've been like 300 bucks or something like that. Stock exhaust, we just opened up the baffle. It came to me with these nice tires on it. Um, and uh, pretty much exactly how it looks now, except for the bars and the grips. So why do I have this bike? Well. They're, it's a, the ultimate play bike for a big guy. I'm 226 too. So like a 100 or 125 is not going to be en enough. But this is, it's just fun to ride. I can bring this to the pits. I could take it to a track. I could do a J-Day on it. But mostly I just ride it around the farm here. And I did set a new record. I rode around the house here. I thought it was four times. They said it was five times around the house on the rear wheel. It's, a, it's an ultimate wheeling machine. And it's got a headlight and a taillight. And it didn't cost me much. I bought this bike for under a grand and put a few hundred bucks into it, and it even has the chain of sprockets it came with. So there's something to be said for getting something that doesn't cost you a fortune. Now these are like hen's teeth. Now these are worth three to four thousand on the open market. They're bringing big money for these because most of them got hammered and destroyed. I got mine cheap, fixed it up. You should do the same. Get off the couch, get one of those, and fix it up. The other bike, this is big black. I ride up two up with my honey with Christy all the time. And uh, we've got a whole wide assortment of bikes. This was, I used to call it my low self-esteem bike. because This had those uh, purple fenders that turned pink. And two, uh, two turn signals were broken off. And they were flapping around in the, bees, the breeze and they had a blown shock. I bought this from my friend, Harry Hall at Hall's Automotive for, I think, about a grand. And uh, it had, the reason I bought it, it looked terrible, but it had no miles on it. 3,000 miles. And I know how notoriously reliable these are. So um, it's just a fun, and I didn't know how good they were until I rode one. It's just a super, if you're an old dude or a young dude or an old, whoever you are, if you like motorcycles and you're big enough to handle one of these, you got to try one of these and give them a shot. The 650 KLR is just an absolute hoot. They're so much fun to ride and they're totally bulletproof. Now we did a lot to this thing. That's a stock paint on the tank. It had a couple of dings. It had a dent position take them out. Dentless paint remover. That's original seat. We put Renthal bars on it. I put progressive suspension, fork springs, and a new, uh, refresh the forks with seals and new oil. Um, I put a progressive shock on the back, which was probably the single biggest upgrade I did to the thing. Kenny jumped it off the loading dock, and um, the handle is great. Not that I do that, but I put Michelin Anarchy tires on it, a nice FMF Power Core 4, and the Wizard put the jetting kit on it. This thing runs amazing. You can rev it to the moon and let off the throttle. It doesn't even backfire. It's just, just in a ride with wheelies and two up. Christy loves riding this thing. We rode this down in Daytona on the beach. She rode the hell out of this down in Daytona, 11 miles down the beach. Fun bike, not a lot of money, and hey, this is supposed to be fun, right? So if you buy a brand new bike for 10, 12, 14 grand, and you're stressing out because you get it dirty or you're not using it, I didn't spend a lot of money, <clears throat> and uh, I got to customize these the way I wanted. The suspension, tires, exhaust, uh, the motor's bone stock, except for the the it, the uh, air filter, the exhaust, and um, the tuning on it, and it's just incredible. It's just fun bike. I have an XR60L in the trailer, in this trailer out here. I've got my XR650L <clears throat> that I got from Uncle Dale. I normally don't buy brand new bikes for myself, but Uncle Dale bought it and um, gave me a sweet deal on it with 90 miles on it. I couldn't pay. He basically left it there and said, pay me when you're ready. So, and gave, gave me, you know, thousands off of what it cost new. So, I love, and that's not why, why I kept it, because I, I could have sold it. I kept it because it's an awesome bike. And that's, that, that XR650L in the trailer, we'll, we'll go check it out in a minute. But um, the 650L has uh, the same frame, very, very same frame. Very similar as the one Scott Summers won, like five Grand National Cross Country Championships on it. And so if he can, you know, it's more of a dirt bike than the KLR is what I'm going to say. It's not as good as two-up riding. So now for more two-up riding, this is a CVO Harley-Davidson. Anybody that knows anything about custom vehicle operations knows that these bikes are um, extremely expensive. This one is no different, but this is really a really, really super rare piece. 
Uh, as far as I, I, I recollect, they made about 700 of these. This is a dyno. That means it's got the rubber-mounted twin shock sport-style um, suspension on it, and it also has a lot of magic here. This was the first diner to come with a 110 cubic inch from the factory. So this thing's 100% bone stock, except for the foot pegs, the shocks, the bags, and I put the biggest, giantest king queen seat because after I had back surgery, I was a little tender, and, and uh, Christy wanted her comfortable too, so we got a massive seat for this thing, which doesn't look cool, it looks terrible, but I got the sporty seat from the factory, the real low one, and the backrest, and we, we put this big leather backpack on there, and with the bags, and I even have a removable windshield for it. Christy's all dolled up, ready to go riding. She's got her leathers on. We're about to go for a ride today. And I've been thinking about doing this video for a while, but th this is the backpack that we have um, that goes on the back. So we can take off. We've literally taken off for a weekend with this backpack and two saddle bags. Then I got my Mustang GT sailing convertible. I had this since 1990. Bought that used too. So none of none of these bikes in here cost as much as my lawnmower costs. This is a, a brand new 2000. 20 Ferris, 37 horsepower, big block, 72 inch mower uh, with four wheel suspension. Why, why did I need that? Well, we mow 25 acres here at the compound. This mower here cost me about four grand used. This one was, uh, I think, 12.5. None of these bikes here cost me more than 12.5. So, um, <clears throat> you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to spend a fortune. There's a lot of really nice Harleys out there. If you're a rider, like my friend Gerald Rothman Jr. wanted to get a Harley. He ended up buying a Dyna S. This is a guy that was on the pole position at Daytona, won the Daytona 200 factory rider. And he loved, the Dynas are very sporty handling bikes, but they're not so fast that you want to do 140 on them every day like you would on a super bike. They're, they're cruisers and they're fun. But this, this CVO, why do I have this one? Well, look at it, folks. Chris, this, this is my favorite. Why, why do you like this one the most, Christy? It is so badass classy. That's the best way I can describe it. It's badass classy. It's the epitome of a Harley Davidson. The paint job is awesome. And if you look closely, the frame is actually painted a dark blue. It's not black. It looks black, but it's a dark blue. And everywhere you look, it's just loaded with um, Harley Davidson. The front, let's start with the forks. These, these are our Harley Davidson catalog item, upside down, high performance uh, forks that uh, these are $3,200 in the, in the catalog and they came stock on this bike. This bike had a $27,500 sticker price when a normal dyno was like 12 to 14, 15,000 during this era in 2007. Of course, I put the only shocks on it for my back and for Christy, but it came with the mags and everything. So I don't really like these bags. Uh, Uncle Dale gave me those bags for free. Um, I prefer the, the Leather Pros, but um, they work great. I just like the style of the Leather Pros a little bit better. But it's been an awesome bike. So there we have it, man. Uh, that's the Kaplan Garage. I'm going to throw the dealer plate on it. And uh, we're going to take take it out for a ride. Taking the Road King out. I mean, the uh, Dyna out for a ride. So without further ado. Uh, oh, I did want to show you the two in the trailer, too. So maybe I'm a guy that does, just doesn't like change. We were talking about that this morning with Christy. I wear the same tank top t-shirt. I got like 30 of them. Same jeans. Three pairs of the same sneakers. <clears throat> and I've been riding the same bikes. This bike here since 86. I guess if you find a great thing, why change, you know? Wrong trailer. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I think I had one too many concussions. This trailer. Someone special today. Christy says Southwick took his toll on me yesterday. I was like the tin man when I, when I got out of the chair last night. I was like, oil, oil. When I walked down to the, to the, uh, to coming down the stairs today, I was using the, uh, using the rails like a handicapped person, but, um, definitely kicked my ass on what so here's my cr500 now listen to this guys eight out of 11 races i've been in the last three weeks i whole shot eight out of 11 races that's about over 75 percentile and when i get to the line i know i'm gonna get the whole shot because i know how badass this thing is and i have the technique to a down to a science so and I, and I never finished uh the worst my worst finish was was a, was a seventh in any race so and uh i won a few so it's just been a lot of fun been riding these since 86. That's a 97, same motor. And this, this has been the same bike as nine, since 1994, the XR650L. I love the big bore, single cylinder, four strokes, and I love the big bore, two strokes. There's a lot to like about the two stroke and this. So you don't have to have the latest, greatest technology. Now, let's face it, I'm in the industry. If I wanted a brand new 2020 20, 450, that's what I'd be riding. But it's just fun to, to ride the old bikes. And uh, if I can whole shot the new bikes 80% of the time, 
on my 500 or 70 percent well you know in, in the times i didn't get the whole shot it's not because the other bikes are more powerful i screwed up i'll i'll, I'll uh i'll be the first to admit but so the cr 500 and, and the now i have a cr the cr 500 in the xr come to work with me and i leave the klr and the xr at home so i have a you know if you're if you're looking for the perfect combination of bikes get yourself a big bore four stroke enduro don't spend a fortune you don't have to go out and buy a twelve thousand dollar ktm just go out and buy yourself a nice klr for three or four, the ones like this that have the burgundy defenders are everywhere for like two to three thousand and, and it cost me 650 bucks to paint the tins uh, uh the, or the plastics not the tank I put some money into it, but it was a, a low initial investment, and now it looks badass. And there's something to be said. There's a certain level of um, appreciation for something you built, not bought. Like like my landscaping here, but that's a whole other story. That was a 10-year project that I was totally obsessed with. But back to the bikes. Um, it's it's. I don't feel like I need anything else. And when I go to bike shows, I don't feel like there's anything I'm missing. You know, and I love my Harley. Um, so you need yourself. You need yourself a dirt bike. A dual purpose bike, a Harley, or something like that, and a motocross bike. In, in, in my world, the XR250 is the ultimate play bike. And listen, I've ridden almost 3,000 motorcycles in the last 10 years. How many people do you know that can say that, okay? I've legit, look on my channel, I've ridden over 2,500 bikes just on the channel, okay? And uh, you need a decent dirt bike like this XR, an air-cooled, simple bike. Um, put VP fuel, not ethanol fuel, and everything you got, and you won't have any problems if you don't ride them. So you need a dirt bike, you need a nice dual purpose bike, and you need a Harley, and you need a motocross bike. And when it comes to the motocross bikes, I'm gonna be, I should be careful because they're going to be unobtainable if I keep on talking like this. Everybody's going to want to buy them. The value's going to go up. You're going to jinx yourself. The steel frame CRs, I just, shh, I didn't say that. Anyways, love you all. Thanks for watching. We're going to go ride. Oh, and you buy a trailer, get a feather light. There's nothing in the world like a feather light. This is another gift from Uncle Dale, the coolest guy we know, Heavy D. He hooked this up big time. He knew I didn't have the money. He just dropped it off and said, like the bike said, pay me when you get the money, you know? And uh, we sold our other trailer and everything worked out. So anyways, a beautiful day. I hope you're out there riding. Get off the couch. Stop watching this video. <laughs> shut, off your, shut off your phone and go start your bike. Love y'all. God bless America. It's Ride 365. I only missed six days this year. And I'm going to keep it at six as long as I can. God bless you.